First Timothy chapter five. And here, this is more practical stuff in the church. It's going to do with uh, widows and elders and stuff like that. It says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Now, I don't think this has got an elder in mind of an overseer of the church. I think this is just a respect your elders kind of situation because it talks about elders and young men and young women and old women right here in this same little section. He says, uh, entreat him as a father and the younger men as brethren. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. So the next whole section is, is having to do with widows. And this widows indeed, that means widows that truly have nobody else to help them. That's why they come to the church. But even in that, there's qualifications. And we're going to see about that. He says, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Your mommy and daddy took care of you when you was little and couldn't take care of you. And you couldn't take care of yourself, rather. When they get old and can't take care of themselves, it's our duty to take care of them. That's good-hearted, you know, human being behavior. He says, it's acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. She that lives in pleasure out there indulging in all kinds of worldly stuff. If she can do that, she can take care of herself. She shouldn't burden the church. It says, And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially of those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You got to take care of your people. It says, let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old. Can't If you're not 60 at least, you can't come in. And you have to be the wife of one man, it says. Having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works. If she has brought up children, if she's lodged strangers, if she's washed the saints feet. See, that's not just something Jesus did at the Last Supper. Even these saints here was washing feet. If she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work, that's qualifications of a widow to be taken in and kept up by the church. It says, but the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Now, he's not saying you're damned if, because, uh, you know, young women's husbands die too. He's talking about these younger widows. If, you, if they go out and marry, they've not, they've not broken the law or damned. He's just talking about, because he's going to say here in a minute, he's going to tell them to marry. But I think this probably has in view stuff that you've seen in, like, the Corinthians. He's telling them not to marry, you know, non-believers. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers and make sure you marry somebody of the church or whatever. I think that's kind of what that's looking at. That's just me. But it says, and with all they learn to be idle. All right, that's what these younger widows are doing. Learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. And gossip, busybody, tattling, that's never good, is it? I will, therefore, so that they don't do all that stuff, the younger women marry. Bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Excuse me. And it says, for some already... Some are already turned aside after Satan. So doing all that stuff, going about being idle, tattling, gossiping, that's turning aside after Satan. Don't do it. If any man or woman that believes has widows, let them relieve them. If there's widows in your family, you take care of them. And let not the church be charged that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Those that qualify, those that have nobody. It's up to the church to take care of them. I think it's James says, religion pure and undefiled is to visit the widows and orphans in their affliction. All right, now we're moving on to elders, and this is not as in respect to your elders. This is actually overseers of the church. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Double honor, that's, you know, of course, honor, respect, that kind of thing, but that can also be seen as cash money. Because he goes on to quote 
a scripture he's already quoted in such an instance. It says, For the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. When he, when he quoted that before, he said he didn't tell us this, God didn't, to take care of ox. He said that for our sake. He's already said, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. All right. It's, people want to debate all kinds of ways whether you should pay your preacher. Is that right, wrong? Paul don't do it. He makes a big, strong case that he does not do it so he can make the gospel without charge. And he tells us to be, he's an example to the rest of us. But he uses scripture to say that, yes, indeed, that is lawful. But the same Paul that says that's lawful also says somewhere else that all things are lawful, not everything's expedient. But here he's saying, count these elders that rule well worthy of double honor. All right. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Now you get into this a lot, especially if you've got a, an elder that's really well respected. And and it's a lot about because of him, a lot of this is the reason your church is doing as well as it is, or that's what you think. If it's doing well, it's because of the Lord. But you've got this guy up on a pedestal, and, and if he falls down a little bit, you're tempted to just kind of sweep it under the rug. Right here it says don't do that. It says rebuke before all. Why? So that others may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without preferring one before another doing nothing by partiality. It's exactly what I just talked about with an elder that, that sins, you know. Don't just let it go. Do what he says to do. Don't show partiality because if some little, you know, what we deem a little believer in there was to mess up and do the same thing that that big shot elder did, you may uh, be tempted to rebuke him and not the elder. No respect of persons. Amen. It says, lay hands suddenly on no man. That ain't talking about fighting. That's talking about laying hands of the presbytery, you know, ordaining elders and deacons and all this stuff and bishops. Don't do it suddenly. Don't do it on somebody that you don't know nothing about or a novice. Let them prove theirself out. It says, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and I often infirmities. So apparently Timothy... Even in his youth, had a stomach problem. Paul says, to have you a little wine for that, for medicinal purposes. Some men's sins are open beforehand, <clears throat> going before the judgment, and that, you know, that's those things that they do that just can't be hid. You know, it's pretty obvious they've done it, and that you, you see it open beforehand, it says. And some men, they follow after. Some of them keep it a little on the down low, and it's hard to see, but... It's going to follow after them. It's going to catch up to them. Just like Moses said, be sure your sins will find you out. He says, likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Works that way with good works too. Some of them you see, a lot of it you don't, but God sees it all, doesn't he? And that's it for chapter 5. See you.